Yo, yo, my sovereigns, what up? This is Boba Fett. I'm censored on the internet. And welcome to episode 108 of Splinterlands 101. A little bit different this week. Um, for those who've been following along, you know that I'm traveling and I'm currently in Colombia with like a 15 hour time difference or something with Matt and Gio. And my late arrival here in Colombia with time frames and Matt and Gio's current obligations, we just couldn't make uh, it happen with all three of us tonight. But being here in Colombia, and you will recognize here on my left, on your right, a pr previous guest from the show, when I met Eco. So Eco Instant on the Hive blockchain. And during that episode, I guess you'd call it, um, yeah, Eco said, well, hey, Bob, come visit. <laughs> like um, at the time, my plans were Peru, Guatemala, Mexico. And I thought, well, you know, yeah, we can we can do that. So uh, here I am. I uh, flew in obviously to Bogota, and then had a butt wrenching six hour drive uh, ride, I should say, in a bus on very windy roads <laughs> uh, with an injured knee. Um, so well, I mean. This uh, camera thing, seriously, this is uh, part of the webcam on my Acer Predator, and it works perfectly well in every application except Zoom. So if we bounce around a bit, um, this isn't a car that we're in. This is actually a bench. This is Eco's backyard. In fact, Eco, uh, for those who want, yes, this is still Splinterlands 101, and we're going to be getting into depth on the wagon trains, the conflicts, because while I've been traveling, I'm, I'll be honest, I've just been completely out of the loop. And it was at breakfast time this morning, we're sitting talking and, and Eco just started talking about it. It was like, oh, wow, I know nothing about this. So chances are there's probably other people who don't know much. So we're going to get right into that. But first, as you can see from the background here, um, this isn't a window. I'm actually on a, a bench. This is like, you know, open space here under some, some cover and yeah let's show you around um this is eco's farm let's show you around a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll talk some wagon trains and some conflicts how's that sound that sounds great let's do a little walkabout okay let's do it so here we are bob this is your workstation huh this is it all right and what are you looking at here let's check these views Okay, so this is uh, Buena Vista Farm. Why don't we take a walk over here, Bob, to really oh, check out oh, the let me view? Just put on my, uh, my walking hat. All right. From Pizak in Peru. And oh, Pizak. my walking stick, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a injury. My left knee at the moment is a little inflamed. I did the full, um, the full trail walk in Pizak. So that's starting from the top of the ruins and then working your way all the way down eventually to the town. A lot of that's up and down as well as zigzagging. And yeah, did a little something to my left knee at the time. So mm. yeah, I'm going to take my walking stick with me. All right. Okay, well, let's head down in this direction here. This is uh, the original Buena Vista. And there's a legend uh, around the Splinterlands community because in the last bull market we were living here and uh, one day I woke up and I noticed that I had I can't remember the exact number if it was sixty thousand dollars of cards and I said that's too many and so I converted those by various means into uh, three additional hectares of land. And so we're going to go and look over our... Look at that. Here we go. So what, what cards did you sell? Well, these were mostly from the untamed. Uh, so we're talking that was about... a good pack. Good yeah. Pack untamed. We, we were in the uh, Kickstarter. And so I'm thinking Mimosa Nightshade, Darius, High Priest Darius... 
Uh, yeah, man. So look you at didn't this. Didn't sell like a kitty or a Yodun? Oh yeah, I oh. probably did sell all of them. Um, I think uh, what was that horsey-looking thing from the Death Splinter? Um, yeah. Corrupted, corrupted Pegasus. Oh yes, I they had that. One. That was a reward card, though. There was one Dark Haon. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so this uh, we used to have this farm just uh, and we had a neighbor below us but now if I get here you can see maybe we own all the way down to the river and uh, here up here in our overlook we overlook the town of El Libano and uh, so this is our beautiful view here and uh, we've got Bob and uh, Splinterlands has been a big uh, big game changer we were able to expand the farm we were able to build a uh, another cabin Bob is staying in our old farmhouse, yeah. uh, which is still livable, right? It is. You yes. assure me that it is it still is livable. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And so here we could look around here a little bit and see some of our restor restoration efforts that we're doing, um, which is pretty cool. I got a chair there. I'm kind of out of place, but uh, yeah, yeah. Quite, quite the view. And so, more so maybe than many other places in the world, this could be considered a Splinterland sponsored farm. A lot of the work and expansion we've done has been thanks to Splinterlands. And so, um, I'm happy to show you guys this on the Splinterlands 101 podcast. Uh, and I just can never get over that view, no matter how many times I come out here and look out over there. It just makes me happy. And you can see the church, the Catholic church, the two white towers there. Or Old World Tartarian. Yes, possibly. right. Old World Tartarian. Technology. <laughs> Those spirals uh, were the conductors of their hidden energy sources. Yes. And I have seen that close up, and it does have all the little nodules going all the way up the white mm, spirals. You so, never uh, know. Collecting that ether. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, this is probably the main point of interest. Uh, without taking you down and, and going around, this is uh, this is it. This is our uh, refuge, our meditation center, where all the uh, where all the work gets done on the computer. We got Wi-Fi here on the farm, and so this is uh, the place from which. And when I get tired, when I get beaten up on the battlefield too much, and I just can't handle it anymore. I close my computer and I go out into nature. And so that's something that, that I always enjoy, uh, being out here. And so we're in the Ant central mountain range of the Andes Mountains here in Colombia. You want to point out your next door neighbor? Over yeah, over there. here's my next door neighbor over there. He sometimes plays music, uh, but he's got good, good taste in music, so that's good. I can hear him. And then over here in front this way is another great neighbor. Uh, that we work with a lot and uh, we've uh, gone over and planted ice cream bean uh, trees in his, on his farm and this guy down here with the trees in the pasture he runs the cultural center and so and down here in the valley that used to be that used to be a fireworks uh, factory and it blew up and so now there's no more fireworks factory <laughs> And uh, I actually won uh, a poetry contest. Yeah. It was like angry po blockchain. Yeah, or? it was on Steam at that time, but it was yeah. somebody can go through my blog and find it, it was angry poetry, and uh, I uh, I wrote a poem about uh, you know dear fireworks fabricating neighbor that tests your wares at 6 a.m. <laughs> and uh, and I said a bunch of mean things about him. And then it exploded. And. Not the next no. day, but it was uh, <laughs> thereafter. It did explode, and that was really sad. We were actually down in town uh, here, and we heard the explosion. I'm, uh, I'm a lifeguard. I'm a first responder, kind of right. trained, and so we rushed up there and, uh, you know, hauling out uh, dying bodies is not something, but we, we make shifted some backboards. We helped uh, as best we could. And uh, there were some deaths, there were some major injuries, and that was really sad. And so uh, I won't be doing any more angry poetry. It was something, I thought it was funny, it was a good, 
it was a good expression of emotion, but uh, at the end of the day, when it, when it blew up, I didn't feel good about it anymore. Yeah. I didn't feel good about that. Um, although I didn't say in the poem, I hope it blows up. I think yeah. I, I think I said it, some other more creative things, but but still, I didn't. I don't know. There was something weird about it. I had put that into the ether. Yeah. And that one over there, uh, Latest yes. is telling me that's Don Antonio. Don Antonio, that's this oh, one right that's here. Don Antonio. Yes, Are you doing yes. a project with him? Straight across. Yep, that's exactly right. And you can see in his coffee fields. Okay, let me see if I get this right on the video. This is Don Antonio. This this house here, and these are his coffee fields. And he has specialty coffee, and we're planting the nitrogen fixing ice cream beans. And he also and letting some of the native trees. You can kind of see. Uh, in comparison to like these coffee fields above that farm over there yeah. or these ones here have av just avocados um, he has a lot of different trees like coming out of the coffee fields and so that adds uh, that complies with like the rainforest certifications you yeah. need 12 additional species of biodiversity to, to comply and yeah there's interesting things interesting things for more future podcasts yeah so just wanted to give you guys a look uh, any uh, any uh, final comments before we get back and like really talk about Splinterlands? Um, like I'm like the view is just like and like you, know, you call it the Buena Vista. Buena Vista. It's um, yes. just think any time you like during the day you can just walk down the hill and be standing here from your office. Looking yeah. At that. Yeah. Pretty Where, amazing. Thank Front, and like Splinterlands got you. Extension, yes, three hectares. That's right. Splinter, yeah. Thanks to Splinterlands. Uh, and so let's get back there. Let's talk a little bit about conflicts because that's okay, new. I'm so excited yep. about that. Yeah. And I'm keen to learn myself because I actually don't know. Ah, I'm going to tell you all about it. All right. all right. So let's get back over there. I'm going to turn this off here. See you back at the office, folks. So, Bob, what do you think? Uh, that's a little glimpse of our farm. How have you felt here since you arrived? Well, it's, it's interesting, like, um, like any new insertation into an eco-environment and being very, um, I don't know if many viewers used to watch any of my philosophical posts, but I'm very in tune with nature. Uh, when I'm in a surrounding, I like to be able to communicate with what's around me. And I wasn't able to do that previously. Like the first couple of nights, you know, it was I was feeling distinctly separate from this environment until your your friend arrived earlier and uh, I was able to partake in some medicinal plant which was grown here in Colombia so that enabled me to open up that realm again of communication and I'm feeling quite at ease now fantastic and it was in this space that we said hey let, let's just do an episode no yes. we, we couldn't get everyone together it's like let's just do one anyway and yeah and here we are you can see in the background whitey Yes, Just trotting past, and uh, so yes, this is uh, and glad to show you around a bit. But this show, Bob, this is about Splinterlands. It is, yeah, it is. And the yes. top... thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Whoa, Whoa. we got there. The... We go. We got Zoom again yeah. on that bumpy ride. Um, so one thing that's really exciting right now about Splinterlands are these conflicts, uh, the wagons, and so I had I set some up. And we were talking this morning about how you uh, you haven't really gotten into that yet. I, I'm and it's a whole ignorant, yeah. new system. It's a whole new system. Now, just to take us back a little bit, uh, with the Chaos Legion airdrops, it, and it used to be in the previous packs, you'd buy packs, and based on how many packs you had purchased, you would get airdrop uh, as as the airdrops went, went on, you'd get these airdrop cards. But it wasn't relevant... It was only relevant how many packs you had purchased. It wasn't how many you still had. And so a lot of people were buying packs, flipping them, and that price of the airdrop was kind of an expected value calculated in, and it helped to a certain extent uh, depress the price of the packs in the resale market. And so Splinterlands team, they, they totally identified that as an issue. And what they've done this time is that you can buy Rebellion packs from officially from the store or on secondary markets. So even like Hive Engine? Or... Yes. Yes, you can buy them on Hive so Engine. So how many you've got, not where you got them from. Exactly. And awesome. you and you get the, get the it thinks, it thinks <laughs> I'm the guy, Bob. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Maybe, left. Oh, no. God. 
yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just leave in together. We'll yeah. in together. Like this, this works perfect with every application except Zoom. On your Zoom, Microsoft for the win. Yes, yeah. thanks, Microsoft. <laughs> um, and so you can get the bags from anywhere. Um, you can get even send them to your alt account. And but what you have to do is put them on a wagon. Now the wagons cost fifty vouchers each. It's about two dollars. You can also buy with the EC or credits, but they cost ten dollars. So I'd recommend people use those vouchers they have, or even go to the secondary markets, pick up the vouchers. Yeah. Fifty vouchers per wagon, and uh, each wagon can handle five cards and up to one hundred packs. So if you have unopened packs, you can uh, put those right on the wagons. And it's actually uh, I read somewhere in the Mavs chat that. Uh, Mr. Dragon and Neo Xion, he was uh, really pleasantly surprised, and I was too. There are, it's really easy. You don't need to spend hours setting this up. You can, you can buy a number of wagons, as many as you want, one, two, three, 10, 100, 1,000. You, one click, you buy the wagons you want. You can then put on all of your packs. You don't have to go wagon by wagon. You can just go in and how many packs you wanna stake, all of them. If you have enough wagons, all the packs are staked at once. Similar with the cards. Now, cards are get a number of points per hour based on the collection power. So not PP this time, we're talking yes. collection power. Yes, CP, right, yeah. collection power. And so obviously leveled up cards will occupy less space for more collection power on the wagons. And so you can also, wagon by wagon, you can autofill or you can autofill all your wagons, one click, all your cards go on the wagons and they generate uh, these airdrop points. Now, every 100,000 airdrop points is a draw. Every 200 draws is a guaranteed card. Now, there's some, if you guys remember before, there's some randomness, but you get a guaranteed one. I believe the current card is called Rage. It's a fire uh, beast, a high mana, high, exciting card. And so every 200 draws you get, uh, you will get a guaranteed one and maybe more. Um, and so it, go, it says how many per hour you're going and the little bar clicks up. And uh, over the month and each month in the future, you won't need to buy more wagons. You just say you got your setup and you're producing airdrop points for each of the next Oh gosh, I think it's nine airdrops, nine months. Uh, so now with land and wagons, everyone's setting their best cards to those. What's, what's going to happen with ranked battles and brawls? Because I'm guessing it's like land, you stake it, you can't use it while it's on a wagon? Actually, okay, so that's interesting. Now, it, you can use, you cannot use delegated cards on the wagons. Mm -hmm. You cannot delegate the cards you have on the wagons, but you can play with them. So you can use them in tournaments and in rank play. And so, and it's only rebellion cards and only rebellion packs. So these are not necessarily the best cards for land. So you got your alphas, your yeah, betas. Very low PP. Right. For land, they land, have land. actually yeah. a, a one half multiplier for PP. So okay. they're, you may have a legendary gold, but still it's probably better on the wagon or in the rental market. Now, the interesting thing is since you can't delegate a rent, uh, you can only uh, have it on the wagon and play. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to the rental market. Uh, some people, obviously, uh, if the prices get get to the right place, it's going to have to, a decision is going to have to be made. Do I get the airdrop points or do I rent the card out? Um, the market will decide. You know where those prices end up uh, for convenience. Maybe some people prefer to rent, but the wagon is really easy. There's no cooldown. You can put the card on. And if you want to transfer, you just got to take it off the wagon. It stops uh, earning those airdrop points, and you can transfer it or delegate it or rent it. But you don't have to take it off the wagon to play in ranked or brawls. Right, which I think right. is kind of clever. We're going to yeah. see how this plays out. We're going to kind of get some idea of expected values with the first one, and then we'll have eight more as we calculate up. But I think probably the rental market for these Rebellion cards is going to go crazy, which means probably people are going to be incentivized to buy more of those packs. And so um, from what I hear, I don't do a lot of rank play, but from what I hear, the Rebellion cards are really effective in the rank play. Uh, the new meta is emerging, and a lot of these cards are really useful. And so people are going to be wanting to battle with them. And we'll see what happens. I'm excited. We're 
We're still early in the cycle, but I feel like Splinter Lens is making all the right moves to kind of get ready and to get excitement in several different fronts as as they're moving forward. Yeah. Now, Bob, tell me, do you are you into rebellion? Do you have a lot of rebellion? Cards? No, I don't. Um, leading up to my departure from Australia, uh, the main focus for me was to try and uh, get more chaos. So I was buying lots and lots of chaos packs on the mm. aftermarket and opening them just to fill some gaps. Yeah. Because I've got like a, a bucket system on. I've got. I run a, a gold, a silver, and two bronze. Originally, it was like one gold, one silver, and one bronze. And so cards that on my main account, Boba Fett, um, Lo Siento, if, if we've encountered each other on the field. And <laughs> when I had some cards, like say for example, I wanted to get a card uh, gold, rare is level six, and once once I capped out level six, any other cards getting was, was spares. They were doing nothing. And eventually, I thought I've got enough cards here for a decent silver account. So I started playing the silver account, and then the same thing happened. It was like, well, wow, my my shit pile of bronze cards here. That's that's a playable bronze account. Yeah. So I did, and then the same thing happened again. All these cards sitting doing nothing. Let's create another bronze account. Yep. And because um, I don't ha I don't on a time energy ratio thing, um, I just use the free Jones bot USB, but I think it's more commonly known as the Jones bot. Yeah. And they just play my bronze accounts, which as far as I I mean, at the bronze level, you know, you're not going to get rich in SPS or anything like that. But it's a great way to farm reward cards because eventually they're not going to be sold out. Right. So great way to do that. And how did we get onto that? Well just we about like rebellion. Right ah rebellion. Rebellion. Yeah. So rebellion was just not on my radar. Like I knew I had limited time to go. I had limited funds to put into uh, just set up land right and who's yes. got money after setting up land um so no i never go into rebellion except about three episodes maybe four i don't know um matt and geo foamed me out geo bought this uh summoner and it was if when it comes to what when something new comes out to identify uh, what's going to be good and for why that's geo geo Geotrix, what the co has. He's, and he said, you, you need this. So I actually bought it live on the show. Shout out, Geo. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need a silver level, though. And that card is on my silver account. It's just too much at the time for, for to level to, to a gold. Do you remember what the summoner was? The life summoner, right? I cannot remember what it's called, but it's the um, the life, the one that's life and water, I think. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's, let's show you. Alrighty. So this is my silver account. Let's limit this to summoners. Here we go, this one. Ah, Prunda Undervesh. Ah, yes. And is that a gold foil version of it? No, it's, that's okay. what I thought straight away. Right. But no, it's just a regular foil. It, but it looks gold foil for sure. Yes. And Life and Water, like, they're so different, those cards, in what they bring to a battle. Yeah. That being able to use both of those, yes. especially when you've got a really limiting rule set. Odds only, mm -hmm. no magic. Mm -hmm. To now have two splinters available to choose from rather than yeah. just one. So rebellion has really changed the meta, and I think part of this is these double splinter summoners for only yeah. three mana. Yeah, and so three that's mana. opening up the meta. I almost feel like this is uh, getting to be really similar to Magic: The Gathering, okay. where you're 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 putting together these teams on a on a reduced time frame in this case. Uh, whereas in Magic the Gathering, you have time to prepare for rule sets and build your deck. But here, you have just two and a half minutes uh, to put together something with this rule set. And <clears throat> I think the game is getting more and more interesting yeah. because of it. And you see, there's also, they have five level summoners, mm. which then give you abilities. Yeah. So the three level summoners, there's no abilities, but you can split them. And let's limit this to Rebellion. So you got your choice of your three level, which no abilities, but two splinters, or one of the abilities. And this one of the abilities, um, stats. Oh no, it's not going to... Oh, how do I... Okay. Gives reflection shield. Some of them uh, initiate a 
second phase in the battle. Yeah. So like once the Tactics. battle starts, yeah, like you say, you can add healing to one of your players and or poison two of the opposition's players. Wow. So there's an extra step in the battle on that. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah, I, I might even have to get back into this uh, battling because yeah. it's really... I stopped, uh, I played a little bit during the untamed phase, but then got really excited about land. You know, I've been working hard on land. I did some, I upgraded this morning. I was, uh, some of our plots, we were down to common, max common chaos cards. And I have been buying up some more rares. So I've been going through and uh, kind of grinding through those old plots, putting the rares on replacing the commons waiting three days from the cool down and using those commons to reopen new plots and uh, we're still working we're at about 42 percent of our region is activated right now yeah so, uh getting there we're getting there but like you are saying it's a nice problem to have isn't it's it? a nice <laughs> problem to have that's right yeah. uh and that's right now um the other cool thing about splinterlands uh, there's been some discussion is of course the 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 flywheel as they call it the tokenomics SPS mechanisms deck? yeah right yeah. yeah so you uh we need more dc always uh and sps is the way to get it you got to burn the sps yeah and so recently we've seen the whole market go down the bitcoin exchange traded fund is released and the results are uh, everything's going down and uh of course you know we're pooled to the broader crypto market so we've yeah. been affected um, and so what we've seen is pullback in SPS and kind of a pullback in DC. It, it, it did stay around, I think it, it bottomed out at 92 cents, which to me personally is still really good. Um, cause you got to think about what is a pseudo stable, you know, it's, uh, it's like, think about a Starbucks gift card, a Starbucks gift card. You take a dollar and you buy a dollars and it's a promise to buy a dollars worth of coffee, right? So. But in a certain extent, it's a it's a less valuable version of a dollar, because as long as you want coffee, it's definitely worth a dollar. But it's a dollar you can only do certain things with. Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised if you're going to go on eBay and buy a Starbucks gift card. You'd probably want to pay 90 cents on the dollar, yeah. maybe 95 cents. But you're not going to pay ten dollars for a ten dollar Starbucks gift card. Why, wow. why would you do that? You could do that in the store. Right. Yeah. So so it doesn't. To me, 92 or 90 cents even is not away from peg. That's to me, that's that's the normal range yeah. for these things. But some people worry, oh, no, 98 cents, it's it's away from peg. Well, to me, that's very good. But we've seen SPS price go down, and that's worried some people. But uh, because the company continually needs to buy DEC, we've seen a lot of pressure. Uh, Bitcoin is still middling. It has not... I think it's rebroken 40k, yeah. but uh, it's still got that downward pressure. But DC is 97, 98 right now. I think we're going to see a lot of pressure when Bitcoin goes back up. We're going to see this great pressure. And why am I so excited about SBS being cheaper? It's because we actually will burn more SBS when people need that DEC. Yeah. If SBS shoots to a dollar, Right, and then we're not going to burn nearly as much when people are turning that into DEC. So this is an exciting time, and this is building us up for that nest cycle. I'm excited about the way things are shaping up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you done any? <laughs> have you done any burning? No, um, other than um, before I left Australia. Let's get this bumpy road again. <clears throat> I um, took the money out of my savings in my bank account and put it into SPS. Uh, I don't know about where you are, but in Australia, on our banking systems, with fees and charges, you're earning, you're paying more in fees every month than you're ever going to earn in interest. So I thought, why? So I moved it, all my savings over into SPS, because then I could stake it and actually earn SPS. And like, literally, like immediately, I was earning, even at 1.4 SPS or whatever, I was earning more every day in SPS than I would ever have earned in the bank. So it was of a smart course. thing to do. Yeah. So when I left Australia, that portion of my SPS I unstaked uh, and liquidated because that it was only in there for that purpose. Um, but I mean, in the situation at the moment, I'm going to have to unstake some more. I had an unfortunate incident on arriving in Colombia. Should we talk about that a yeah. little bit? Okay. okay. So and and Bob contacted me from Peru 
and uh, we went through the details and I said, okay, one of the things that I, I emphasize said, when you get out of the airport, you need, there's a lot of guys. And so anybody who's traveling to Columbia, you get to El Dorado airport. There's hundreds of people saying taxi, taxi, Uber, do you need a car? And you want to say, no, no, I don't no, 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 no. And go right, right out the door. There's the yellow cabs and they're, you know, like legally obligated to maintain the tariffs that are normal in the city. Um, and so Bob goes right out, gets in the yellow cab line, probably said no to a bunch of people. Uh, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no. And gets in the line. What happened next, Bob? <laughs> yeah, so there's this, literally there's this lady there directing people. And I actually watched her put people into the yellow cabs. So on taxi Amarillo. And she comes up and says, oh, you know, I said, uh, on taxi Amarillo. Uh, oh, see, see, see. Yellow see. taxi, yellow yeah. cab. That's yeah. what we want. And um, like, like people getting in and then it was like a, a wait. There were no yellow cabs for a while. <laughs> and there was like three or four people queued up. And then like... This guy comes up, talks to her, and she says, ah, you know, yep, good to go. So off we went. And we started going over the pedestrian crossing to the other side. And <clears throat> you know those moments you say, oh, I really should listen to my gut. And it was like, um, no, this isn't right. I'm just going to – but we, I was talking to the lady. We were having a conversation um, in broken Spanish. And, to, and then we get to the guy's car and he opens up the boot and I was like, no, 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 I'm not putting my luggage in. And, then we were, he says, oh, and it just, was not a yellow cam. No. That it was this guy's point. car. Yep. Random dude. Yeah. But just this chick at the, the lady at the uh, directing people in the yellow cab line, uh, I just, you know, nice official looking badge and all that sort of stuff. Um, I guess subconsciously I was just... But you know, back in my mind, I was going, no, no, no. But anyway, we did it. And he showed me, like, you know, where we're going. It's going to be like, it was like 25,000 pesos. And Alex, uh, Eco had already told me before we left, like, don't pay, you know, it should be somewhere between 11 to 13. And anyway, he came down to 16. And I thought, for the energy of it all, I I'd had a, there was a little issue getting out of Peru into Colombia as well. So I was like, I just want to get to my hotel. I just want to get some sleep. So I said, yep, 16, okay, no worries. So jump in, we get, <clears throat> at least he delivered me to the right place. That's, that's Thank place. goodness. Yeah. And then <clears throat> from there, he was able to get here, no yeah. problem. And um, I also, like, didn't have, like, or did, I actually did have enough cash. I didn't realize that at the time. Um, I had 100,000 pesos, but the way it's written on the numbers, it, I thought I only had 100 pesos. And he's like, ah, oh, yeah, paid by card, pay card, no problem, I have the app. So paid by card, $16 US. Um, he helped, he actually helped me with my luggage out of the boot. That was well, nice of him. yeah, that was imagine at that yeah. rate, it yeah. was very helpful. <laughs> so I get up to my room and then just out of curiosity, thought I'll check the apps just to see how much. He had charged me for less than a 30 minute trip from the airport to my hotel, $480. I was like Australian, oh, Australian but still yeah. that's yeah. too much yeah, yeah. and and it sh should have been about $25 Australian 16 US yeah. 25 Australian $480 and I paid with my um, crypto.com visa card yeah contacted support straight away and like three days later I haven't heard back um, so hey anyone's on crypto.com you've had issues with visa because on a regular visa you just cancel the transaction right. for a bank cancel it don't have that option with crypto.com. So yeah, maybe anyone who's an experienced knowledge, drop me a comment, we can DM on Discord. Um, Cause yeah, $480 for me on this this trip. That's a, a huge chunk out of my, out of my budget. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have that problem. Uh, Bob, against his better instincts, got in to not a yellow cab <laughs> and it turned out costing for him, everyone yeah uh more than he was anticipating thank goodness though you're here everything's fine it's fine yeah and no one has hurt or injured him mm -hmm. uh but uh we're we're trying to work on that see yeah. if crypto.com <laughs> come on we'll cancel the transaction put yeah. in a red flag or something what yeah. is the right step? We're looking into that. We're trying to figure it out. Yeah. And um, but in the meantime, because yeah. the further liquidation, if we can get back up to three point eight again, or maybe a little bit above, be appreciated. Yeah. <laughs>
So help us out out there, Splinter guys. Buy up that as cheap as PS. It's cheap. <laughs> and so, and it is natural. I mean, uh, we may have all gotten a little ahead of ourselves. Even I found myself thinking, "Yep, we're in the bull market now." Yeah. But of course, if we remember, we haven't even hit the halving yet. And the ha usually it's a few months after the halving when we start feeling like we're really in a bull run. So we definitely got ahead of ourselves this time. It's going to go back up again. I don't know if in time for, for you to pay your rent yeah. in Mexico, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. And, uh, and we're still hoping, holding on hope, uh, diamond hands. And, uh, we'll see how that goes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep, don't quit your day jobs yet. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is probably a good good point there to, to wrap up. Yeah. Unless do you have something further you want to add or? Um, in and terms of Splinterlands. As far yeah. as Eco's farm and his projects and what he's doing, all that kind of thing, if you have any questions, um, what's the best way for them to find you? Well, if you're on Hive already, I'm Eco Instant on Hive. If I am also working Twitter, uh, I've been putting some energy and effort into Twitter and that's going pretty good. Uh, also at Eco Instant on Twitter, uh, so you can reach out to me. And I hope to have Bob on. I hope to host the show and have Bob as a guest pretty soon. Uh, won't be Splinterlands related. It'll be more about this philosophical yep. stuff we've been talking about. And uh, so keep an eye out for that on Twitter. I'll do a Twitter Spaces and uh, follow along, guys. And uh, so this conversation will continue in another format very soon. Same bad time, different bad channel, but it'll be linked here for the information. Thanks for joining us on 108. We'll see if we can get the whole crew back together for 109. And I'm Boba Fett. Peace out.